in zoom okay okay yeah you got it yeah i got it i got it okay uh a very good of good day to everybody and thank you very much for our make a full screen sorry make a full screen yeah yeah done go ahead yeah so thank you very much to this platform who is providing us an opportunity to showcase our products online so before we start the uh, before we start our topic of uh, uh, presentation we'll just inform a small introduction about myself and the company i am zaki ansari i am taking care of international marketing in machine fabric i am associated with pharmaceutical machine industry since last 16 years so basically i am a b mechanical so let's quickly come to machine fabric who are we we are basically a 35 year old company who is into uh, in the field of sterilization disinfection clean utility generation we have four manufacturing facilities in mumbai or i would say around mumbai with a total capacity of 10000 square meter as shop floor area till date we have made 4000 machines which are operated all over the world our machines are operation of uh, are operating in fdn eu gmp facilities like presineska b pfizer myland dr reddy's orbindo and many more so this is just a brief company history about uh, about us that we started in 1984 when we first make made our first sterilizer then after that uh, 1988 1991 1992 1995 and all the subsequent years we made different types of sterilizers which were earlier imported in india so one of our uh, important point about our, us is that we have made machines which were import substitutes for, uh, import substitutes so like i can say that in uh, in various years past Uh, we have achieved lot of uh, achievements like for example 21 cfr compliance systems then uh, uh, thermo thermo compression machines then lab washers where few of our achieve uh, distinct few achievements we believe in our values of integrity leadership flexibility and sensitivity we what we offer is basically a make in india product which is completely locally manufactured with global standards we have a good technical expertise our sales and marketing team is completely capable of doing a customized solution we have a very great after sale support uh, as in machine fabric product range we cater to three industry segments one is life science healthcare and food and beverages so in all these three segments wherever you have any need of any sterilization or cleaning or disinfection or clean utility generation equipment we can be your partner into that our in infrastructure includes basically four state of the art manufacturing facilities with total area of 10000 square meter our workforce is 300 uh, plus uh, uh, people we have a strong r&d support and which made us possible uh, to deliver 4000 machines which are operation in operation all over the world we are iso 9001 certified company we have a team of ex seven qa qc experienced engineers uh, these are some of our range of products like steam sterilizer closure processor hot water spray sterilizer steam air sterilizer dry heat sterilizer vhp pass box in lab solutions we have glassware washers vertical autoclaves steam sterilizers in terms of industrial cleaning gmp washer can be customized to suit your any uh, cleaning application when we talk about clean utility or sterile utility we have thermo compression distillers distillers wfi stills and pure steam generators we also cater to other industry uh, which is hospital and food wherein we make this range of products this is our service uh, network we have 29 field service engineers and eight customer support executives which are located in our head office and these points on the map you can see are our uh, local service presence of our engineers so our uh, uh, any any our, any problem with the machine our service engineer can be there within a day or two in terms of documentation we we take care of complete dq iq oq fat protocol with 21 cfr complying softwares if considered in the machine our team includes nine software engineers who are well proficient enough to work on mitsubishi allen bradley siemens plc's with 
uh, industrial PC with uh, PC based SCADA, 21 CFR compliant softwares, and all these automations works are GAM5 certified. Now, this is our global footprint where we have supplied machines to various countries across the world, which mainly includes Middle East, North Africa, Southeast Asia, few parts of uh, North and South America, and CIS countries. So this is just a uh, customers where we where our machines are working, which includes uh, Indian and as well as international customers. Uh, just to give you that, any uh, you you name any pharmaceutical injectable facility in India who is into sterile manufacturing, they will have our machines. So thank you for a small introduction. I'll just quickly uh, rush to the topic of the today, that is basics of sterilization. So we must be wondering what is sterilization? So basically sterilization refers to the process that kills or eliminate bacteria, spore forms, fungi, or viruses from a surface on an article. Now, how does it is achieved or what are the different types of sterilizations? So we have three different types of sterilizations all over the world. One is sterilization by moist heat and uh, dry heat. One is sterilization by chemicals like ethylene oxide gases or hydrogen peroxide. And one is sterilization by gamma radiation. So here we are going to use, uh, here we are going to talk about sterilization by steam. So sterilization by steam is done in a device called autoclave. It is basically, uh, you can say, a device which is like a pressure vessel which operates on steam. This, is, this device is invented by Mr. Charles Chamberlain in 1880. So all thanks to this gentleman who has made this uh, thing possible. Now, when we talk about sterilization, steam is one of the uh, topic which cannot be left or which cannot be ignored. So what is steam? Steam is basically a vaporized water uh, or it's a transparent gas. Okay, heating power of steam comes from its latent heat of vaporization. And this is the amount of uh, heat which is required to make it hot. Now, high pressure steam has a capacity to reach very high temperature and very high pressure, which is, which increase its lethality efficiency. Now, how does the steam get its uh, killing effect of bacteria or all those things? So basically, you can see from this uh, screen that it takes 80 calories to make one liter of water to boil, but 540 calories to convert that water into steam. Therefore, I can say that steam at 100 degrees Celsius has seven times more capacity than a boiling water. So I can say in a nutshell that steam is water in gaseous form. Now, how does steam kills microorganisms? So it is assumed that moist stage is, is uh, killing microorganism by coagulation of essential proteins. So these are basically some chemical terms like vibratory motion of every molecule is increased to a level that hydrogen bonds are uh, uh, splits and the killing effect is taking place. The role of steam, uh, when we talk about any autoclave chamber, air is another important part which needs to be discussed. So air and steam do not mix at all. Okay, now air is heavier than steam. So whenever you will put steam in any uh, space, air will always allow it not to settle at the bottom. So it is very important for us to make sure that the uh, residual air must be removed from the chamber. Otherwise, the steam will not penetrate the load uniformly. If the items are sterilized, item to be sterilized are wrapped too tightly, then air cannot scap and it will prevent the steam to come in contact with the microorganism, which will not be a good source. So why air must be removed? You can see from this picture that when you have an air uh, inside the uh, autoclave chamber, it will make a surrounding around the uh, equipment and, uh, and not allow the steam to come in contact with the particular surface. Now, how do we make sure that air is removed from the chamber? So there are two methods. One is downward displacement or gravity method in which we do not employ any kind of mechanical device. What we do is we allow the steam to push the air outside the system by forcing it through the drain. The other method is steam pulsing, wherein we apply a vacuum pump in which the vacuum pump is mechan mechanical device, which, which sucks the air from the chamber and allow the steam to come inside, which is like a steam pulsing. Now, 
what are the usage of an autoclave the autoclave is basically used for sterilization of garment rubber stoppers seals filters housing filling assemblies vessels and components for area sanitization having said that what are the advantages or advantages of an autoclave it is one of the preferred way of sterilization it's non toxic process it is less expensive as compared to any other method and cycles are very faster but what are disadvantages steam at higher temperature and pressure is hazardous pitting or discoloration may take place in metal and it is not suitable for moisture sensitive material so for that we have to use chemical sterilization or dry it sterilization now when we talk about autoclave steam is one of the important factors so we always talk about steam so what is the importance of steam so steam has to be dry and saturated so when we talk about dry and saturated steam or autoclaving steam pure steam is one topic which is always uh, uh, you can say talk of the town for the autoclave people so pure steam is basically the purest form of steam available which is actually a condensate or, or which is a, which, which is actually a vapor form of water for injection so it is basically a steam which is free from all chemical and biological impurities but what are the physical properties required for a pure steam to be a good autoclaving uh, material so its dryness value should be minimum 0.95 degree of superheat should be 25 degree celsius max non condensable gases should be 3. Uh, should not be more than 3.5 now when we talk about autoclave autoclave is subjected to leakages because of the nature of process because of the uh, cyclic heating cooling and pressure vacuum cycles so there should be a frequent leak testing of all these uh, autoclaving cycles a leak rate as per en285 is 1.3 millibar per minute is the acceptable criteria now there are two kinds of leak test available one is vacuum leak test in which you create the vacuum and check the integrity of the chamber under vacuum and one is a pressure leak test in which you do the uh, you pressurize the chamber and check the integrity under pressure now what are the typical autoclave cycles are a steam sterilizer is generally uh, carried out at 121 degrees celsius for around 15 minutes or 134 for 3 or 4 minutes but temperature of sterilization is basically the function of your bio burden your integrity your heat resistance and the material being sterilized for example a garment will be having a different uh, temperature in time uh, metal will be having a different temperature of time of sterilization so these are the graphical representation of the cycles of sterilization one is without vacuum pump and the bottom one is with vacuum pump all the autoclaving uh all the modern autoclaves use one value called f0 value which is basically the time required in minutes to produce the equivalent sterilization effect at 121 degree celsius which is the sterilization temperature now all the automated control autoclaves uses f0 value to control this cycle value this is a typical formula which is inbuilt in the plc's of nowadays autoclave to calculate your f0 value and your f0 value is one of the important factor in deciding your autoclaving efficiency now what does an autoclave looks like and how it is what are the components of the autoclave so it's composed of a pressure vessel called chamber a heating system a vacuum system a sensor system which includes temperature and pressure a control panel which will house your plc and hmis data logging system that is recorders and printers and a safety system which will make sure that the autoclave is safer for operation what what are the designs or guidelines we one must follow for an autoclave so all the pressure vessels should be designed as per asme section 8 the system should comply with en285 and iso 11138 and iso 17665 guidelines all the construction features should meet the guidelines specified by usfda gmp guidelines and pics guidelines and eu guidelines if required the system can be supplied or should be supplied with ce marking if required automation can be provided with 21 cfr complying requirements how does an autoclave in metallurgy and fabrication should be okay. so preferably the stainless steel is to be procured from the steel mill with the heat uh, quality and uh, certificate laboratory testing should be done welders needs to be qualified you should have an stringent ipqc procedure and you should do hydro testing and dye penetrated testing of all the welding joints and all the uh, uh, welded parts now a chamber of autoclave 
should have minimum nozzles to minimize the risk of leakages, which we talked a few slides back. The railing should be easily removable. The drain point should be located such that it will allow the condensate removal. Now, this is an important point, which we'll just highlight here that there should be a 2% slope for condensate removal so that there is no condensate. And if the condensate removal is very efficient, then you will have a better sterilization efficiency. Now, there are three types of, uh, you can say, designs of the doors. One is horizontal sliding door. One is vertical sliding door in which the door will slide vertically. And one is hinge door. Now, all these door movement has to be very smooth. The autoclave generally used in the industry have two doors. So there is one loading door and there is one lo unloading door. Now the door can be have CNC gasket groove for uh, better efficiency. The motorized door can be used in some cases where you want to eliminate the risk of air leakages from the cylinders. The door must have the door obstruction safety switch, which will make sure that the operator is safe at every cycle. Autoclave should be provided with stainless steel piping. Then uh, you can say that uh, all, all the autoclave should be provided with uh, sterilizer application valves. For temperature control validation, you will have a validation sensors. All the autoclaves must have a vacuum system for removal of air from the chamber, the vacuum system can be also provided with the uh, recirculation or cooling arrangement for better efficiency. In case if the system is not having uh, in uh, external supply of steam, you can have a pure steam supply, uh, which is inbuilt in the system, or you can say clean steam supply, which is inbuilt in the system. So there are two methods. One is heating the steam or heating the water with the help of black steam, which is called reboiler or with electrical heating, which is called steam generator. Now, what are the test programs? So these are few test programs which an autoclave must possess. That is leak test in cold condition, leak test in hot condition, pressure leak test, and bovine dick test. We will talk about bovine dick test in the next slide. So this is the sterilization program about uh, autoclaving cycle. So gravity displacement cycle, steam sterilization with pre-vacuum cycle, SIP of vent filter. Now, what is a bovine dick test? A bovidic test is basically performed to make sure that uh, to make sure your efficiency of the autoclave is the best, or you can say that it is performed to evaluate the confirmation of air removal from the chamber. So this is cycle which needs to be done every day, and basically it talks about a test pack which contains a, a paper which is thermochromic ink, which is having a thermochromic ink, and it uh, if the color changes to black from the original color, then it means that the, the uh, test is uh, done successfully and the autoclave is completely uh, devoid of any air. Now, temperature and pressure sensors are important parameters in measuring the, uh, in measuring the quality or the, uh, in measuring the parameters of the autoclave. So all the temperature sensors should be diagonally placed to each other. There'll be one sensor which will place in the drain line and there'll be one pressure transmitter in the autoclave. The temperature sensor should be class A with uh, 0.1 degrees Celsius of least found. The pressure transmitter will be having dual application of uh, vacuum and uh, pressure and it should have a least count of 0.002 bar. Okay. Autoclave should also have a utility monitoring system which will make sure that all the utilities coming to the chamber are intact and in line and in case of any uh, in case of any breach of utility there will be an alarm now autoclaves which are used in garment uh, uh, sterilization can be or garment or rubber stopper can be provided with hot air drying arrangement it can be also provided with a drain condenser to cool the drain going out from the chamber Autoclave must have a uh, handling accessories like carriage, trolley, shelves. The software should be uh, PLC. There will be an HMI. There will be a mimic of uh, autoclave, which should appear like this. If required, 21 CFR part 11 complying software can also be provided. In terms of process recording, there has to be an independent device like recorder or a printer. 
in terms of alarms and safety it should have all the alarms and safeties in terms of doc documentation we must have all dq iq oq and i think we are running out of time so thank you very much for your time and giving an opportunity to present this thank you